I would yeah. love to talk to Esteban. Esteban calling from Texas. Um, he would like to talk about the function of profanity. I love this topic. <laughs> Hi, Esteban. Hey, yeah, Esteban, like a Esteban. Thank you so much. Analogy. I haven't thought about it before. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I've kind of grew up in a religious household until like two years ago. So I've been exploring and deconstructing a lot of things along the way. And one of them wasn't necessarily religious, but my religious parents and the institution would be like, uh, profanity is just all bad. And like, I, I accept it on some uh, scenarios and some conditions. Like there are many social situations where you wouldn't want to use vulgar language. Um, although there are some social situations where vulgar language is expected, and you straight up won't fit in if you don't uh, if you don't apply any. Um, and I mean, I kind of have been thinking about that function for for a while. Uh, yeah, it kind of. So what do you think? Topic, but I'd like to hear you guys' response to that first. Well, what do you think? I want to hear what you think first. I, I think that it's not the kind of communication that I would like to be known for having. Uh, one thing I remember hearing a long time ago, I can't even remember the original quote, it's that long ago, was that, uh, like, you can say with a swear word something much better in, like, an actually constructed sentence. Like, anything you can swear about, you could probably form more eloquently and far more impactfully in a set of words. I, I think that has like a few exceptions, but I, but I like the idea of it and uh, putting my, my brain in that thought process of like, you know what, swearing would be something, I suppose. But what if I, what if I instead expressed the thought succinctly? Yeah, I mean, it's a good question. Um, I don't know, Eric, do you want to go first? Um, sure. I swear like swearing profanity um i was also kind of taught taught that growing up that like you you know like it, it's just not something that we should engage in that it makes you look um well it, it can make someone just look like i don't know i <laughs> maybe like a little bit less classy or that they um it, it's almost seemed like a character flaw in somebody i think that um I think my view on it now is that it's just this kind of just another kind of purity test that people kind of can arbitrarily put other people through. Um, I think that language is mostly just a cultural thing. I, I don't I don't um, I don't think it's bad to say that maybe we shouldn't swear when we're like talking to our grandparents or when we're in a situation where it just it maybe would be offensive to somebody and maybe use that, you know, that um, discretion in that situation, but I don't think there's anything like morally wrong with swearing. I think that there has even been like, I don't know. I think there's been studies showing that like swearing can actually be good for you. It's a good way to kind of express your anger because we've decided that it's a bad, um, alignment of letters and that when people say it, then it means something. But, uh, I, I don't know. I think there can be good uses for it. And I think there can be like just totally benign, like amoral, non-moral, not good or bad uses with swear swearing. And it, mostly a cultural thing, but I don't know why it gets lumped into like link, like religion and religious thought so much other than it just, you know, there's a lot of things well, that people it, will tie with cultural purity to like uh, some sort of faith position. But. I mean, it probably come from the religious, at least from the Christian religious perspective, it probably comes from like, thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain sort of thing. That's the way I would imagine. Although I, I don't actually That's know actually that. Yeah, that's true. Actually, that was something that was a misunderstanding on my part for a long time that we we were, I don't remember where it got taught, but the idea that um, that scripture in particular meant to not use profanity, but right. understanding but it later doesn't, on, right? it, it it's doesn't, like, no. it's like invoking, it's like, isn't it like trying to do like, like magic tricks basically by yeah, invoking... Well, it's been a while since I, I like, understand look. about like taking the Lord's name in vain from the congregation I came from yeah. was um, don't swear in God's name. Like, you know, I swear yeah. to God this because, you mm. you know, you probably shouldn't say that about someone you believe in. Right. And the other yeah. was about, like you said, uh, blaspheming or trying to do something right. in God's name when you're probably. Yeah, that's the one I was that's <laughs> the one I was going to mention. Yeah the idea of like saying something like uh and saying that like this is uh, taking it like with the authority of god saying like this needs to right. happen because god says it and you're using his name in vain for your own vanity so right. that was another right. way that i understood it later on too 
but yeah, I mean, my perspective on like lang uh, profanity, I guess, swearing is that um, it's very context dependent, right? So, uh, I, I mean, both of you alluded to this, but I think as a society, we've sort of made it uh, not cool to swear in front of, say, children or whatever in certain contexts. Um, and I think that that's partially because swearing uh, is often associated with like something negative happening. Maybe it's like an outburst of emotion or uh, a sign of like danger or pain or something like that. And uh, and it's a bit of an alarm, right? That's how I see it is like, you know, if you swear, maybe something's going wrong and it sort of draws everyone's attention to it, depending on how you say it, right? Because uh, Estevan, as you alluded to, there are some contexts where you just swear casually to, and that's what's expected to sort of fit into a situation, right? And so uh, I think there's a bit of code switching, if you know what that is, um, where, you know, in certain, when you're talking to certain people, you'll swear a lot more because that's just how you talk to those people. And it gets back to the fact that, you know, the, there's nothing about the actual words that's different. It's more about how you say them and what language you use. And Aaron, to your point, there are studies that have shown that when you are swearing, you can endure a greater amount of pain for longer. Mm -hmm. So they did a study where they put people, they had people put their hands in ice water and uh, half of the people were not allowed to swear and the other half were. And the people who were allowed to swear uh, were able to keep their hands in the ice water for longer periods of time. Um, and so, I mean, I think it serves a lot of functions and it's really about how you, as a person, you know, what, what importance you put on those words and the words could be anything, right? It's like, uh, the same reason that the curse words that we have in say English are different from any other language. They may be related and they may not. Right. What do you think, Estevan? I think I'd add a little bit to your uh, to your like definition and uh, attribution of the function of profanity and language because there are a lot of swear words that are um, uh, comparisons to objects or denigrating comments that you can make. Like this is gonna be the first time I say this word. If I if I fall out of my chair, then someone resuscitate me. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, wait, wait, wait. Uh, I'm ready. Oh, we gotta get ready here. Dog. This is your first yeah. time. Okay, this is your first time using this word? Yeah, I've got to bunker down. I've never said this word okay. before. Okay, let's I get ready. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. It, um, female dogs are bitches. Hmm. And so when you call someone that, see, I'm not even saying it a second time. <laughs> when you call someone <laughs> that, you're calling someone a dog to dehumanize them. I almost fell out of my yeah. I, had to, I had to sit for a moment and process what I just did. <laughs> So I think I think oh, that function in language is also uh, a big part of it. Where you're also sorry, to, I'm I'm gonna get through my point. <laughs> um, are you like uh, denigrating someone, or you're conjuring to someone's mind uh, like actions or you know, thoughts that are not actually that contextually makes sense to what yeah, everyone's the context. doing in the moment the that kind of draws everyone's attention. But do you yeah. think that most people, when they use the term bitch as a swear word are thinking about the female dog or are they using a different colloquial definition? It's like asking what someone means when they say cool. I think it has changed a lot. Mm -hmm. I, right. I think, I think that's a good comparison, think right? Like, word as a like female dog or trying to actively denigrate someone. I, I would actually say, yeah, I think you're trying to get to the point that maybe less than 10% of people, as they say the word, actually think of a female dog. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, the, 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 I, I don't think that most people do because I think there's a lot in the way you say it, right? Like, there's a lot in, like, the force and the emphasis of how you might say that word um, that adds to the meaning. Yeah. I think it's just a, a overall, it's an interesting commentary on, like, how language works and, like, swear words, I don't think... Like that's something that we have decided as like a culture that that's the ones, those are the ones that are on the list. And I think that they mm -hmm. kind of move, like they move in and out of severity depending on like where we're at with as a culture. And I think new words can become profanity and then they can drop yep. from profanity. And I think yep. like, 
yeah, I mean, good example is, is the word retarded, right? That was exactly. a medical term 50 years ago. Oh, uh, yeah, and, but and now it's and, completely, uh, completely and, and it's inappropriate completely, in most, in, well, right. I would say all scenarios because it's, it's, it's moved through that in our culture. So I think it's just, yep. it's just that. Yep. And I, I, I love that you said it, um, Esteban, Esteban, sorry, I'm saying it wrong again. Um, I think that. Uh, I think you should uh, go and, and say it a couple more times and really work on your different ways that you say it. Cause I think that MD is right, that it, it's all about how you say it. And I think that um, using it in the exactly appropriate kind of scenarios can be really, really powerful as experience Cathartic. for yourself. Yes, yes, definitely. <laughs> so maybe use it Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of sounds Nothing though. Happened. Lightning did not strike you when you said it. Because there's nothing yeah. magical we have about the words. Time to get into kind of a second branch off topic about it. Um, well, we get to like maybe a, quick a branch off of the conversation if you'd like to get to another caller. Uh, we do have some more calls online, but if you can like maybe give us a little teaser here about what you, what the cop topic is, and if we can get through it quickly, we can do that. Go ahead. I think I think part of it would be uh, like you're encouraging me to try and say swear words more often. But it's kind of kind of a bit of a hang up to me uh, whether or not I should view it as reclaiming parts of language or if it's going to end up uh, turning me into a bit of a conversationalist that I'm not super into being. Well, I just I think, think you shouldn't be afraid. You shouldn't mm -hmm. be afraid of words. You are the master of, you know, what you say, uh, despite what I just told God about free will. Uh, I think that you you know, control what you say and how you say it and when you say it. And, uh, and I just wouldn't be too concerned about, you know, I think it's more important that you communicate effectively. And in some situations, effective communication is going to uh, require swearing. So like, sometimes if one of my friends calls me and they've had a bad day and they describe something bad that happened, I go, man, that really fucking sucks. And I'm not being rude Crass. when I say fucking, right? That's, that's, it's a way of communicating or me trying to communicate that I'm being empathetic, right? I'm empathizing with their situation. Uh, and I think that maybe I wouldn't be as effective if I didn't swear in that situation. And ultimately you had to make that call MD, right? Like you right. are using based your on my relationship with yeah, that the person context, and the context discretion yeah. there. And, and you know, that, you know, the situation that you're in and you, you had that sense that this was going to add to the effect of what I'm saying. Right. Right. But exactly. I, yeah, I, and I do think you're right with the, with that, just to not be afraid of it. And Esteban, I think that the best way to find out how it's going to affect you is to maybe just try it. You don't have to, and you can look at yourself in the mirror and practice a couple swear words and decide you don't like it and you don't mm -hmm. have to use them. There's no pressure to use anything. Um, so, but there's nothing to be afraid of. So I think that that's, that's a good, good way to move forward with that. And I think it's a really interesting conversation. Yeah. Well, I'm going to try and sing a couple Tim Minchin songs. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. And, uh, That'll do it. Me and the Atheist community discord server is roasting me. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Thank, <laughs> Shout out to the Discord thank you for, server. It's a pretty good way to be in, uh, informed. Yeah, thank Come you. Come chat with us thank in the Discord, know. and we'll all chant some curse words together after the show. Yes. Oh, boy. I'll try. <laughs> that sounds <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much right, for bye. calling in. Uh, bye.